Hi there. Today, I will share on how to turn your old PC into a network attached storage. Please stay tuned. Today, we are going to install XPnology. XPnology is an open source Linux based boot script that emulates a version of Synology DSM. XPnology is suitable for experiment, testing, and proof of concept. XPnology is not suitable for production or commercial use. Please purchase Synology device directly for stability, warranty, and support. First, we need to download XPnology boot script. Browse to this website for the latest download version, link in the description below. Under Releases section, click on the Latest button to continue. Then, scroll down to view the available download options. Select the download option that matches your hardware or virtualization platform, in this tutorial I will select the native image option. Next, is to download Rufus Utility. Rufus is a tool to create a bootable USB flash drive, you can also use any of your preferred tool to create a bootable USB flash drive. Take note that the USB flash drive must be at least 8GB capacity. Now, we also need to download the latest DSM package from Synology website. Select the model and the version that are suitable for your system and also that are supported by XPenology. In my case, my computer's CPU almost matches the DS3617XS model, so I will select this model. XPenology support a wide range of models, please browse to this website for more information, link in the description below. After you have made the comparisons and are sure which model suits your system, proceed to select the correct model and the DSM version is shown here. Once everything is downloaded, now we can create the bootable USB flash drive. Open Rufus Utility, then select the downloaded XPenology image file. Do take note that, all data in the USB flash drive will be wiped clean. Ensure there are no important data in the USB flash drive. Once the bootable USB flash drive is created, proceed to plug into your computer. Ensure the system BIOS is configured to boot from USB flash drive. You can also manually select the USB flash drive during boot up, but it is recommended to have it automatically selected as the first boot option. Once the USB flash drive is booted up, you should see the main menu. It will automatically select the first boot option and continue on the boot up. Depending on your system, this may take a while. After the install wizard started up, you should see the configuration screen is shown here, select the second option to choose your model. For my computer, the supported model is DS3617XS, select your model accordingly. Next, you need to choose which DSM version, in this case I will select the latest version. Next, you will be prompted to either select Auto Configure or Manual, I will choose the No option to manually configure the system.
In the next prompt, select Use Random Serial Number and MAC Address option, this will save you some headaches at a later stage. In the next prompt, you need to choose to either configure only on existing active ports, or configure with maximum supported ports for DS3617XS model. I will just choose existing active ports because my mainboard only have a maximum of 4 SATA ports. In the next screen, you can select whichever packages you want to install, but I will just leave this as default for now and continue on. Then, you will be prompted to select the CPU performance, in my case the default and recommended conservative settings suits my system. You can also choose other settings that suits your need and the CPU type you have. As my CPU doesn't support encryption, it will automatically disabled by Xpenology. Once you are satisfied with the configuration, proceed to build the loader. A summary screen will be displayed, review the configuration and if everything is ok, continue the installation. The installation will take some time, please be patient, I will now fast forward the video. After several restart, you should see the following screen is shown, Xpenology have successfully boot up. Take note of the displayed URL address and write it down, as we will need that address in the next step. Now, open your favorite browser and key in the URL address that you have note down earlier. If successful, you should be able to see the first loading screen is shown here. When prompted, click on the install button to continue. Next, you will be prompted to either automatically download and install the DSM version, or to manually upload the DSM. As we have already downloaded the DSM version earlier, we will select to manually upload the DSM file. Click on the browse button to browse for the downloaded DSM file. Once the correct DSM file is selected, proceed to click the next button to continue. Take note that all connected hard drives data will be wiped, ensure there are no important data on all those hard drives. Check on the I understand option and click on the continue button. When prompted, type in the chosen Synology model, mine will be the DS3617XS model and click on the delete button to continue. This will take a few minutes to complete, I will now fast forward the video. After several restart, you should now see the first welcome screen, proceed to click on the start button to continue. Now, you will be prompted to create the device host name and the first administrator account. Take note that the default username, admin is not permitted, you need to create a unique name for security purposes and also a very strong password. Next, you will be prompted to select the automatic update. As this is a Xpenology, it is recommended to select the last option. In the next screen, you will be prompted to create a Synology account. You may skip this step as we are using Xpenology system. We can also ignore this option and click on the submit button to continue. The DSM will now continue the configuration as required and may take a while.
Once the DSM installation have completed, the browser will need to be refreshed. Once the browser is refreshed, you will be automatically logged into the DSM portal. After successfully login, you will be prompted with several questions and options. It is up to your choice of whether you want to install certain packages or enabled enhanced security features such as multi-factor authentication and etc. But for now, I will just skip everything and configure it at a later stage. Before we can use the XPnology, we need to first create a storage pool and volume. Depending on your system the capacity may differs. I will show you how to manually create a storage pool and the volume. First, go to Settings and then click on the Storage Manager option. When prompted, just close and exit the windows. On the left pane, click on the HDD slash SSD option. This will display all connected hard drives or SSD, verify that all drives are in good and healthy status before continue. If all the hard drives is in good conditions and no errors, in the left pane, click on the storage option. Then, click on the create now button to start creating a new pool. A wizard will pop up, just click on the start button to continue. You need to specify the RAID type for this pool, I will just select the Synology Hybrid RAID or SHR. There are many RAID level available, but I preferred the SHR type. Now, you need to specify the pool's name, give the pool a unique and easy to remember name. Click the next button when done. In the next screen, select the hard drives you want to be added into the storage pool. In my case, I will select all the available hard drives. Once all the hard drives is selected, just click on the next button to continue. Next, is to create the storage volume size. You can specify your own required size, but for me I just use the maximum available capacity. You can also give the volume a unique name or description for easy identification. Just click the next button to continue. Next is to select the file system format. As recommended by Synology, the system works best in BTRFS file system. Click the next button when done. Review the summary and if everything is good, click on the apply button to start creating the storage pool and volume. When prompted, click on the OK button to continue. The creation of storage pool and volume will take some time, from a few minutes to a few hours. This is because depending on each hard drive's capacity, the larger the capacity of each individual drive the longer it takes to create. And if you are creating multiple volumes in the same pool, this process will be significantly longer. As my system have 4 units of 1 terabyte each, with a total of 5.4 terabyte of storage pool and volume, it took me about 6 hours to complete. After 6 hours later, my storage pool and volume is now ready for use. You can now create SMB share folder or install any packages that you want. Thank you for watching. And if you like my video, please hit a like button and subscribe to my channel. It will be a great motivation for me.